name is Ted Leyato with the Lighthouse Temple Voice of Christ for Gospel Church Ministry located in the beautiful village of Aua, American Samoa. We welcome you to our program. Um, before we start, I would like to address our people in our Samoan native tongue before we continue our service in English. Yeah, before we share the word today, I would like to turn it over to my beautiful wife, Rachel, and our worship team to lead us in a song of worship. Thank you. chapter 2 verse 13 for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters and dug their mouth cisterns broken cisterns that can hold no water so our scripture for today says that God's people have committed two sins or two evils first of all they've forsaken God second They've dug for themselves their own cisterns or their own wells or pits that can hold no water. 
and but they have forsaken God. He is the source of the, or the fountain of living waters, the true source of living water. Another translation says, "He is the Lord is the source of life giving water." It says that the people have done two evils. Not only they have rejected, first of all, they rejected God, the source of life giving water. But then they went and tried to dig their own wells, wells that are cracked and leaking and can hold no, no water. In the book of John chapter four, when Jesus went to the well in one of the Samaritan cities, a woman who came around noontime, a woman from Samaria to draw water. And Jesus told her, hey, give me some water to drink. And the woman of Samaria said, verse nine, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans, which is really true. The Jews detested the Samaritans. In verse 10, Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And this is the same challenge for us today. Jesus is asking this lady, he's letting this Samaritan woman know, if you knew the gift of God, if only you knew the gift of God. If you read about this story, it's of a Samaritan woman who comes around the noontime, when it's the hottest, when there's no one else there. So you can tell she's probably a social outcast, but there's Jesus waiting for her. This was her moment. And he challenged her, if you only knew the gift of God, who it is who's saying to you, give me a drink. And then you can ask him and he would give you living water. And that is the same challenge for us today. If only we would know the gift of God. If only we know God's gift of grace through Jesus Christ for us. We can ask him. See, that's what he said to the lady, to the Samaritan woman. You would have asked him and he would have given you the living water. If we don't reject him and if we ask him, Jesus will give us real living water. In verse 11, the woman said, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself along with his sons and his livestock? If you look at in the Bible, this well and this land in this area, this is actually the area that Jacob gifted to his son Joseph. Nothing happens in, by accident in the Bible. This is a portion of land that Jacob gave for his son Joseph. Who was Joseph? Joseph was a brother that was rejected by his family members. And later on, even though they treated him evil, they tried to kill him, but later on, Joseph became a type of savior for his family. And here's Jesus Christ on a portion of land that Jacob gifted to Joseph. That one, one of the inheritance that Jacob blessed his son Joseph or his sons uh, with. And this is, here comes the real savior, sitting there waiting for this woman this woman that's a reject in her society, who's coming at noon time to a well to draw water. But Jesus offers her living water. Jesus offers her, you know, if only you would know that gift, the gift of God. You would ask this person that's talking to you and he would give you this living water. And this woman was challenging Jesus. Are you greater than our father Jacob? Yes, he is. You know, that's the right question. She's asking this guy, are you greater than our father? Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, along with, it, along with his sons and his lifestyle. And Jesus said, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. Just like G um, in the book of Jeremiah, our scripture for today, Jeremiah chapter two, verse 13. We forsake or outright reject the Lord which is our only source of true living water. And we dig our own wells, you know, because all of us, everybody, 
we have this void in us, you know, that's why you see people, they do crazy things, you know, people, there's people that go out, look for thrills. You see these base jumpers always jumping off mountain tops and bridges, you know, with their parachutes doing all sorts of crazy stuff, you know, looking for the next thrill to get that adrenaline what rush, right? That's us digging our own wells, you know? Some of us, we feel, you know, for some of us that we're not crazy enough to do those things, we, it's our hobbies or our TV drama we like to watch over and over. You know, for some people, drugs, they turn to drugs or alcohols, but these are water that we'll just thirst after again and again. It will never satisfy that void that's in us. Look at all the TV celebrities that we know of that has everything. They had the fame, they have fortune, and yet they still committed suicide. Why is that? And, and a lot of us, we don't have that much money, but we're striving for fame and fortune to be known, to get our name up there, you know, to get rich. But a lot of people already achieved that and they still commit suicide, you know? I remember the famous, uh, one of our famous actors, um, I used to love watching his shows, you know, he committed suicide, but he was making other people happy. You'd never think that he was going through, you know, depression and all that. They was wrestling with all that. That's because we dig our own wells that cannot hold water, that cannot hold real living water. And Jesus said, the water that I give you, you will never thirst again. Jesus said in verse 14, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water that I shall give him will become in him. Notice that. He says, the water I give you, it's not this physical water. It's not this physical. See, I just drank my bottle of water. I'm still thirsty. <laughs> but he says, the water that I give him, it will become in him. So notice where the water source is. It's in you. That water that Jesus gives you, it will become in you, in him, a well of water, springing up into eternal life, springing up into eternal life. You know, like a spring. What is a spring? What is a water spring? A water spring is a source of water. It's an underground water. It's a spring water. It gets refreshed every time, you know. There's always fresh water pumping into that spring over and over. And that's that living water Jesus is offering. He says, if only we know the gift, the gift of God. And if you ask, he will give it to you. And then in you will spring up that water in your heart, inside of you, that water, that life giving water will spring up into you, into eternal life. It will become in you a well of water springing up into eternal life. See, that's why Jesus had told Nicodemus in, um, in uh, John uh, 3, uh, chapter 3, he said, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again, reborn. When we accept that gift from him and he gives you that living water, it becomes in you a spring. Your, you know, your heart becomes that contact point for God. You know that? Once you receive Christ as your Savior, Jesus Christ, you allow him that gift of God your heart, your heart, inside of you. That's why it becomes a well, springing up into eternal life. Why? Because now your heart, inside of you, it's God's contact point here on earth, through you, through your heart. That's why every day you wake up, it's like you're refreshed in the Lord. Every day you wake up, it's another, you know, it's like a spring of water, just springing up life into you, you know, fulfillment, satisfaction. As long as you have him in your heart, every day is a new day, a new adventure for you in the Lord. In verse 15, the woman tells Jesus, Sir, give me this water so I don't get thirsty and I have to keep coming here to draw water. And then Jesus says, Go, call your husband and come back. And she says, I have no husband. You see, Jesus was identifying this woman's well, her own well that she's been digging up that makes her thirsty over and over, that's never satisfying to her, which is men, her relationships with men. He says, that's true, you don't have a husband. You've been married five times. And the man you're with now, he is not your husband. 
the woman got a little bit defensive and she was like, uh, I can see you're a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus told her, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship uh, when we will worship the Father, neither on this mountain or in Jerusalem. In verse 23, he says, there's a time coming when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For these are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. That's a personal relationship with the Father. And that's what he seeks, those that will worship him in the spirit and in truth. Remember what the Bible said? What did Jesus say? Say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So you got to worship. God is looking for those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And Jesus is the truth. And you know that Jesus did something so incredible here. When he brought this up, the lady says, you know, the Samaritan woman says that, you know, I know the Messiah. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And in verse 26, Jesus says, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Wow, it's very incredible. This lowly woman, you know, her status, her social status was ruined because she was married five times. She's with a boyfriend now. You know, back in those days, you know, people stay away from you. And yet here is Jesus Christ. This is very incredible. I mean, he kept all the wise people of his days, the scholars, the Bible scholars, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, even his own disciples, kept them guessing, like, are you really? But here's this woman, this lowly woman that no one, that everybody probably despised. And there he is revealing to her, I am the Messiah. You know, Jesus is revealing to you, I am your Messiah. I am your Savior. He's revealing, see, because the people that need Jesus the most is, is us, the people that are always in trouble, the people that are always searching. Because this woman, I mean, God God bless her soul. Yes, she was looking for love in all the wrong places, you know, going to all the wrong multiple relationships, but she was still searching, you see? And Jesus, it's like Jesus telling her, search no more. I'm the guy that's gonna give you you know, this life-giving water. It will never cause you to thirst again. And that's our challenge for us. Just like he asked the woman, if you knew the gift of God, you would ask of him right now to give you this living water. If only we know the gift of God. Praise the Lord. And you know, Jesus is waiting for you. He's more than willing to reveal himself to you as your Messiah, as your Savior. He's more than willing to reveal to you and to offer to you this life-giving water so that you will never thirst again. Praise the Lord. And you know, in verse 34, when the disciples came, they marveled at him. And Jesus said in verse 34, my food, say Jesus, is to do. Because they asked him, have you eaten? You know, they were surprised. He was talking to a Samaritan woman, asked him if he has eaten. And he said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to do and to finish his work. Notice that Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. What is the will of God? And Jesus said, that's his food. What is food? Food is nourishment, right? Food is nourishment for our body. In other words, you have to eat food to survive, to live. In other words, Jesus said, my very life, his whole being, Right? is to do the will of him, of God that sent him, and to do his work or to finish his work. What is God's will? What is God's work? It's you. <laughs> you and me. That's God's will. That is his work. That is Jesus' life. He says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. What is his work? Jesus was working for you. He was working for me. That was his work, that was his life's work, his life's greatest achievement when he died on that cross. Took your place and my place and died for you and me. 
you know what the Bible said? It wasn't with things that, that um, you know, things that rust or deteriorate that he bought us or um, redeemed us with, such as gold or silver. But they say it was his own blood. Did you know that? His own blood. He spilled his own blood to save you and me. And that is the will of God. His whole purpose was to save you. His whole life existence was to save you. So don't ever think down on yourself because God made a way for you. God made a way for us so that we can experience this living water through his son, Jesus Christ. Stop going around digging your own pits or your own wells that are cracked and cannot hold any water. But receive, receive Jesus. Receive him. He is our true source of life-giving water. Water that will never thirst again. Water that will always satisfy you. Water that will spring from within us. A well springing unto eternal life. I pray that the word of God that I share today will bless you. Thank you again for visiting us. And um, I hope to see you guys again soon next week Sunday around the same time. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Father, Father God, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done, Lord, on this earth. Your will be done in our lives. Your will be done in those that are listening to this program right now. Your will be done in their lives as it is done in heaven, Lord, in Jesus' name. Pray, Father God, everyone that's listening, to this program right now that you will bless them whatever their needs lord we thank you that you said in your word that you will meet all our needs according to your riches in glory by christ jesus those that need help father god we thank you lord you said in your word that no weapon formed against us shall prosper those that need healing for their bodies lord jesus you said in first peter 2 24 that you yourself he himself you took it upon yourself, Lord, on your own body, on the tree, our sins. And everything that revolves, evolves from sin, like sickness and disease and turmoil and fear, you took it all on your own body, on the tree, so that we who are dead in our sins should live unto righteousness. And everything that evolves from righteousness, life healing of our bodies, peace, joy, fulfillment, Lord. Thank you, Lord, so that we who are dead in our sins should live unto righteousness by your stripes, Lord Jesus. We were healed. It's already done, and we thank you, Lord. Pray for your peace, Father God, your blessing over all those that are listening and tuning in to our program today. We give you honor, praise, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you again for joining us today. May God bless you. From the light, from your lighthouse temple, voice of Christ for gospel church family. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.